Welcome to Kitchen 143. I am your host, Michelle Aventajado, and I am so excited today to be exploring one of my favorites, Italian cuisine, culture, and of course, um, food, right? More than just the cuisine, we have some specific dishes. So one of the things that I'm sure you guys probably know about me is you know that I'm Filipina American but I am also Italian American. So my mom is Filipina and my dad is American Italian. His, his mother, my Nana, was actually first generation um, born after his, her parents came across and through Ellis Island. So um, when I met my husband, Nino, he was kind of amused. I had an uncle Mike, I had an uncle Tony, um, I still have an Uncle Mike. I have I had an Uncle Tony and Uncle Sonny um, and an Uncle Joe, of course. So whenever we were all hanging out around the table, Nino thought it was a hoot to get to know the other side of our culture, the rest of culture, um, the Italian culture where we sit around the table for hours. Um, and of course, in this episode, I'll get to revisit some of those favorite dishes and of course the comfort food that I enjoy. Um, as well as learning a little bit from our guests. I'm also excited to welcome my good friend Mia Lauchenko. Um, we will also be joined by Isabel Patron from Casa del Formaggio. And of course, we'll be checking in on one of my newest discoveries here in BGC, which is the European Deli, TED for short, um, where we have guests are our guest chefs today, the Roman chefs, Paolo and Alessandro, joining us from their uptown location. So as always, be sure to watch out for the Quiz the Cook questions where you can get a chance to take home um, all of the things that we have on the table and some fun products for you guys to try making your own Italian dishes at home. So of course, be on the lookout, pay attention. I know you guys do that as well. We have some of our comments here. It looks like we have some new viewers and of course some of our old viewers are staples um, and uh, we'll go through. So prizes, what can you guys expect for the prizes? We have a 2000 peso gift certificate from the fellas over at TED. All you have to do is go down and visit them at their uptown location. I promise you'll love it. If you're going, let me know because I'll stop by too. Um, we also have Italian pantry staples from Oriental Merchants. And this is, you know, this actually, these brands are brands that everybody has in their homes in Italy. You'll also get assorted cheeses, much like this box right here. We'll go through it later so you can see from Casa del Formaggio. And you will get Italian language lessons and e-learning subscriptions from the Philippine Italian Association. And Alessandro Milani, you know, over at PIA really helped put together this episode with us. I wish he could have joined us, but hopefully he'll join us for another one. We have to know, you guys know, you have to live in Metro, Metro Manila, or of course, if you have a friend, a family member, or, you know, a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend that you would like to share your loot with, we can only ship to Metro Manila because obviously guys, some of these prizes are perishable and they won't make it to the province. Um, please share the live stream because of course that's how we know that you know sharing is caring. And of course we wanna educate as many people as we can, not just about Italian food, but Italian music, culture, movies, and you guys will see more about that later in the episode. We are broadcasting live today from Rappler's Facebook page, also the Mama and Manila page, as well as Twitter and YouTube for Rappler. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, we can welcome chefs on cam now, and we will, of course, say hello to some of our viewers. Oh, great. We have everyone here. Hi, everyone. How are you? Hi, Mish. Hey, Mimi. Hello, How are you? Hello. Thank you for joining me today. And I'm sure, well, all of you have something to share, and I'm sure our viewers will be really excited um, to learn from all of you. Um, when we talk about Italian food, for me, obviously, I know Isabel, who, Isabel, you're married to Francesco, who is from Venice. 
And then we have Alex and Pao, who are from Rome. And then we have Mia, who Mia and I like to eat, right? So all yes. of the different ways we enjoy <laughs> Italian food, I think this is important to share, right? So I grew up eating American Italian food, where um, a lot of the, the proper names of things growing up in New York, they were cut short. So. I know that Isabel, how would you say this cheese? Mozzarella. Okay, so my uncles and my family, we would call it mozzarella. So obviously there is a little bit of difference growing up in um, New York with American Italian roots. And of course, Paolo and Alex and Isabel can definitely share the more authentic side of Italian food and culture. Um, so. My comfort food is Italian food. My favorite dish to make on Sunday is meatballs and penne, and it's the kind of meatballs that I will braise for hours. Um, how about you, Mia, your comfort Italian food? My comfort Italian food would probably be lasagna. I like the, I like having, I mean, it's pasta, it's carb. I mean, it's like a hug to your soul. It's <laughs> hugging your soul, you know? So I do like that. My kids love it too. So we like making it together. Um, they're in charge of prepping the cheese because I don't like grating. So they grate the cheese and I do everything else. And that's fine. That's actually good because then you're sharing the workload. Um, yeah. Isabel, when you prepare um, comfort food for Francesco, what would that usually consist of? Being that he's from Venice, I'm interested to hear. Yes. Uh, well, the typical Italian or Venetian food is always spaghetti alla vongole for pasta. Mm -hmm. And we have our appetizers always at home. We have the sardella in saor, which is uh, sardines, mm -hmm. uh, pickled uh, onions. So that's, it's a staple at home. Wonderful. Um, so instead of putting out charcuterie, you would put more of the sardines and the pickled vegetables too? A lot of, a lot of seafood. So it's a yeah. seafood mix. You have from crabs, you have from shrimps, you know, so it's a mix of seafood when it comes to appetizers. Which is interesting. I want to revisit that because I know that's how you and Francesco met. So we'll talk about that later. Um, and Chef Alex and Paolo from the European Diner, tell us um, what you guys think is comfort food. Okay, for us, comfort food, you know, we are used to, to, uh, to execute always more complicated dishes because of our job. Huh? So when it comes to comfort food, for example, for me, there is nothing more comforting than carbonara. I come from Rome. It's something so simple where the quality of the ingredients you know, make a, have a crucial role. And it's something that makes me feel home. You know? So definitely is that one. And of course, my girlfriend as well loves it. So it's, nobody, nobody can eat carbonara now. So it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's comfort food uh, per se. Not, okay. on, not only about? this one, because it's a moment that you can spend with the... Uh, uh, the person that you love, your friends. So it's not only food. It's a moment maybe to spend during the week and just to recover from the stress of the whole week. So you are uh, just spending quality time with good, with good food, of course, and also with a good uh, company. Yes, absolutely. I agree. And actually, food many times is a language of love. Preparing the meals. Of course, I know Italians are just as passionate about our food as Filipinos. So when we bring something to the, to the table, it really is an expression of love. I was in an event last week and I was able to listen to quite a few of the country's most prominent chefs uh, sharing some tips and tricks. And a lot of times what they were sharing, what I found like as the common thread that ran through their advice for these younger chefs um, was you wanna make something that's just familiar enough maybe a little bit foreign, as well as um, triggering a memory or that, that place of comfort, like um, uh, Chef Pao, you said, uh, you know, car there's nothing more comforting than carbonara. So in this case, 
I know that when we prepare food, we're creating memories, right? We're creating memories for our family, core memories for our family, core memories for our lover, our, our girlfriend, our boyfriend, whoever that may be that we're preparing food for. And that's so important. So let's check in with our viewers. Um, guys, let us know where you're coming in, where you're watching from. We have um, quite a few viewers signing in already and saying hello. And of course, someone said, watching from Pinangonan, and um, this is a home bakers and cooks group. So hello, Elia Ella, Ella Kumia Sison. Thanks for watching. I hope your whole group is together. It's fun when you watch together, then you get to learn something together as well. We're creating memories. Ooh, what happened there? Okay, so um, then we also have Carrie who's saying she's excited to learn. Joanna Gube, hello, Joanna. Mia, Joanna's watching. Um, Steph, uh, Aaliyah, Ella is still, she's commenting quite a bit. Okay, someone said they want to see gelato. Sorry, gelato is not part of this episode, but hopefully it will be part of the next episode in our Italian series. Um, guys, do let us know where you're where you're um, signing in from, and then of course, make sure you go ahead and share the live now. Make sure it's set to public so we can see it, and of course, this is how you guys will get a chance to win some of the goodies that we will be giving away from all of our partners for this episode. Really excited! Hi, Mark Ebo. Um, watching from someone is watching from Kalaokan, from Pasig. We also have someone watching from Malabon. Someone is watching from BGC. Willa, Willa Meta. Oh. <laughs> she's watching from BGC and she's here for TED. So she's here for the European Diner. Hi, Willa. Thanks for tuning in. Vanessa says she cooks carbonara with a simple recipe. Vanessa, our chefs here on CAM will teach us how to make the authentic carbonara. So please stay tuned. Okay, here we go. Um, we did talk about carbonara. We talked about authentic Italian food. And I moved in 2006. So I've seen the Italian or the European scene of, you know, imported goods being available here from 2006 until now. So many more options, so many more things we can choose from than just, you know, one place to go to. Um, Chef Alex and Paolo, how do you feel the Manila dining scene is ready for um, Italian, authentic Italian food? We, I come here, let's start from let's do a few step back. So I start coming here on holiday in 2010. And uh, as a person who's passionate about food, when I travel here, I was with friends and I wanted to try only local food. But of course, I'm Italian, so after a bit, I mix my own. So I had zero knowledge about, about Philippines. And uh, walking around in Mall of Asia, I saw a place it was called Italianics. So okay. Shame we'll be nice. Because I didn't make research. But, but I entered and I read Carbonara, no? And yes. uh, I ordered it. And I remember the scene when the waiter brought the, the, the dish in front of me. And it was the, 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 the American one, no? so the, with cream, ham, peas, and mushrooms, and I was shocked. And everybody was shocked by my reaction, no? because I said, it's not the real one. Uh, so my friends that actually were studying in culinary school, they said, why, what is the real one? So back in the day, it wasn't easy to find the proper ingredients. It wasn't easy to find pecorino cheese, to find guanciale. So I had, of course, to adjust. But I make it in their own house, and they were impressed. They were shocked. Uh, so from that, I start coming and cooking for friends. Then I right. moved here 2017, I manage a few restaurants. And uh, I was always experimenting, showing some clients what is the real Italian food. Right. And uh, I saw a difference in appreciation about authenticity. You know? What before was considered strange, so not easy to, to, to give to everybody. Now it's something that Filipinos want. And it's something yes. that we think they deserve. They deserve to have and taste the, the real authentic food for us that, that's our core our core in, in tech no? it's it's to give the most authentic dish we can serve to our clients because otherwise we feel we are frauding them with 
if we try to, to shortcut on some on some things. So and we saw this this uh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> sorry go, on. Okay. go ahead. Go ahead. We saw this this change in uh, in approaching no the, the authentic uh, food Italian and not only Italian. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it's really a, a really nice thing for us doing this job to see, you know, to see people loving and wanting to experiment with the uh, authentic foreign dishes. Well, so I, I would agree. I definitely think we are definitely more ready for more authentic dishes. Um, but I would also say that everyone deserves to have authentic Italian food. <laughs> Yes, because yes. there is nothing better um, for of me course, than course. Italian food. Nino and I honeymooned in Rome, and we also honeymooned in um, uh, Tuscany as well as Venice. So we saw huge differences in the simplest of things. Fresh tomatoes from Italy are completely different than fresh tomatoes from Jersey or New York and from Manila or from um, the Philippines. So um, all equally delicious, but there's Not the same. Italian, the tomatoes, the Italian, Italian tomatoes are in a league of its own, I think. So, um, and yes, maybe I am a little biased, but um, when it comes to ingredients, okay, you mentioned guanciale and how difficult it was to find now. How about ingredients like, let's say, cheese? How do you find it um, in finding the sourcing these ingredients now? Now it's it's a uh, it's a lot easier uh, compared to years before. You have a lot of uh, different importers, but finally there is also there are also people like in Casa del Formaggio that they produce no, the the extremely good quality. Uh, cheese products, no? so dairy products uh, in the Philippines. No? So with local products, they are able to recreate uh, Italian flavors in cheese. And, and so that is uh, a lot easier. And uh, it's great to see you know, also uh, the, the business taking this way. No? So seeing the, the potential that there is in the Philippines and uh, making it even, uh, even better, no? escalating. Thank you. Um, I love that we are able to get more ingredients and, of course, local versions of um, products that, you know, cheeses, especially from Isabel. I'm, I've been familiar with Casa del Formaggio since we were going to Palms. They used to have it in the deli counter. Um, so, Isabel, what inspired you to come up with the cheeses? And while you're talking about the cheeses, I'm just going to bring some on cam also. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the family started in uh, 2012, bringing in cattle uh, imported from New Zealand and Australia. So it's a hybrid cattle. And uh, 2014, we started commercially making cheese. Our first cheese, of course, was uh, typically making queso coquille because we didn't know anything better. Right. But, but, uh, but eventually, now you do. sorry. Now you do. <laughs> now I do. <laughs> well, with a lot of help from, of course, from our Italian counterparts. Uh, without them, you know, like us studying studying in Italy how to make uh, the, the cheese, we wouldn't be where we are now. Right. Right. So thankful that they're actually the cheese makers are willing to share the process and you know it's a huge undertaking i'm sure you can share more about that later in the episode um but it's really important to see all of the things that goes into that go into actually taking care of of course the dairy cattle and um coming up with these different cheeses i just want to show them quickly before chef paulo and alex um walk us through how to make the authentic carbonara so really quickly, we have the stracchino. Stracchino. Stracchino well, so for us on the northern side, but more for Italy, it's called Crescenza. Ah. But, uh, because my husband is from, from the north, so that's what they, that's how they call it. So we have Robiola. Robiola, yes. Burrata. 
Provolone, which is one of my favorites. Asiago Alto. Yes. You even have a cheddar. Well, the Filipinos always look for cheddar. So <laughs> yes, they do. They do. <laughs> and of course, a Parmesan. Yes. I'm so having a lot of burrata right now. I feel like I can oh. eat the whole ball. <laughs> yeah, no. So good. Okay. All right. Um, so here is the mozzarella that I just threw into a caprese salad. Of course, fresh ingredients important. And, um, you know, all things taken into consideration, Chef Alex and Chef Paolo, I know that when we had our first discussion, you were very passionate about carbonara. Are you ready to share with our viewers the authentic carbonara? <laughs> Some secret. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So this is how we do the authentic and traditional carbonara. The ingredients are so simple. We have four ingredients above all, a pasta, the pasta that can be dried or handmade fresh. We have guanciale, we have uh, egg yolks, and uh, of course, pecorino cheese. This is the four ingredients that made a fantastic carbonara. So first of all, we cut the guanciale. And uh, after that, we will prepare the carbonara cream. Let's say carbo cream. So we here, oh, close. Okay, so here we are preparing the carbo cream. So we are dividing the white to, to, from the egg yolks and we will mix it with the pecorino cheese and the cracked pepper, black pepper to obtain this Question. cream. Question, if we didn't yes. have pecorino, um, what's another cheese we could use that would still be authentic? Parmigiano? Yeah. You can use a, a very uh, dried cheese, a fat cheese, cheese. that maybe is very aromatic, it's similar to the pecorino cheese. But someone use half pecorino and half parmigiano, but depends. Is there, this is supposed to be the standard of the carbonara one. Got so now it. we will uh, just salt the pasta, the water, sorry, and then we will put the pasta and let it cook. And then we are going the, uh, to sear the guanciale. Once the guanciale, we will release all the liquid fat. We will put some of this liquid inside the carbo cream to let it, uh, more, uh, to let it be more aromatic and more tasteful. No? And after that, we will whisk it to obtain a cream that is not too much thick and not too much liquid. And then we will create the mix inside the pan. So we will whisk the pasta with the guanciale and the carbo cream to obtain a really creamy pasta made with these few ingredients. And this is the final result. Of course, the secret is not the ingredients because the ingredients are well known. The secret is to uh, do in the same Look at that slow mo. Everything, every step you have to do in the exact time. <laughs> <day>. Yes. <laughs> So whoever was holding the camera this for this shot, they were also able to taste it. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know, as Alex, as Alex was saying, no, it's extremely simple. Just a few ingredients. What matters is the quality and the way of preparing. No? So no need for cream, no need for, for these kind of shortcuts to make it creamy. Yes, so there you have allowed, it, guys. Mish, are we allowed to ask the chefs, like, how much cheese do you need to be able to make, like, to, to, to two egg yolks? Like, how much it, of the pepper uh, do you need? It really prepare? depends on several factors. Uh, here, for example, on two egg yolks, we use around 50 to 60 grams of pecorino cheese. It depends from, you know, uh, eggs are not always the same and uh, also pecorino cheese, also the cheese, based on the aging, based on how it was keep refrigerated, no? So you have to, to, uh, adjust, to adjust at the moment, no? But more or less for two yolks, let's say 50, 60 grams of, of pecorino can be, can be enough, but can be... Or maybe you, you mix all the cheese, you know, with the egg yolks, and 
until you have a cream that is not too much thick, not too much liquid. So you can uh, see you know, the difference on that. And you can adjust or uh, mixing, you know, mixing all the ingredients inside the, uh, the bowl. That, that's what we were discussing before. No, it's uh, uh, Italian cuisine, it's, it's uh, given by word of mouth. No? Right. Our great, great grandmothers yes. and so on. So it's uh, for a lot of recipes, there is no uh, real uh, standard yeah. because it's something that you adjust all the time based yeah. on the ingredients, based on the palate. Uh, it's yeah. a great challenge uh, in some ways on a business point of view, but that's the beauty of it. No? Right. Because right. You, you don't really follow the grams, you follow your instinct. No? Yes. It comes that from is. within you. That looks really easy to make. I'm looking at my box now. I'm thinking, what can I use instead of pecorino? Because I don't have pecorino. We don't have pecorino. You can make them. It's, it's okay. So some other Italians probably will kill me. <laughs> <laughs> we won't no, tell. We promise can... we won't tell. <laughs> well, you can use parmigiano, of course, parmesan. Okay. You know? If you want, uh, if you cannot find pecorino, uh, Yes, parmesan. You can mix with some other uh, sheep uh, milk uh, cheese you can find. It's important oh, that yeah. it's a uh, hard cheese. Yeah. Yes. Hard, hard and aged. Hard Meaning it's aged, Mia. Right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. But authentic, it's then authentic, we're talking about four ingredients, right? Eggs, uh, spaghetti, uh, pecorino, guanciale. and guanciale. Right. And so egg yolks. Very easy. So I think, you know, Mia, you were just as surprised. All of our viewers are saying, wow, that looks so easy. Thank you for the recipe. <laughs> it's yeah, a I want to try it. I want to try want it. To try, yeah, I want to try that authentic recipe. So, guys, you if should. you don't want to cook it, it's okay. You can just go down to the European diner in Uptown. You can; they, they will make it for you fresh as well. Everyone is craving, of course. And now, guys, it's time for a quiz the cook question of course as we know up for grabs we have a 2000 peso gift certificate from the european diner italian pantry staples from oriental merchants assorted cheeses from casa del formaggio italian language lessons from the philippine italian association please share the live make sure it's set to public this is the first question so being that it's kitchen one four three we will take the first person who answers correctly to our quiz the cook question. Alex, could you please read our oh um let's see. We need to read. I will read this question. <laughs> oh, I will read this question. Um, what is Mish's mine favorite dish to make for my family on Sundays. Uh, I mentioned so this really quickly in passing when we were chatting. It was something that I said, you know, I cook for a lot for a long time. But you know, let's talk about while we are finding the winner, right? So, guys, everyone who's tuning in. The people who win for the five prizes, kitchen one, four, three, four, four. So if you're of a certain age, like Mia and I, <laughs> and maybe Isabel as well, um, you know that one, four, right? The, yes, 27. <laughs> one, four, three, four, four means I love you very much. And since we are sharing the kitchen love, that's the number of the questions that we will be um, choosing for um who wins okay so while we're getting our winners i do see someone did answer correctly there was a little trickiness there because people are answering mia's favorite comfort food dish um also chef paolo's favorite comfort food dish but it was mine um and so i talked about my favorite comfort food dish that I like to cook. Um, but timing is everything. So while we are um, coming up with a winner, um, you know, Isabel, we talked about seafood earlier and how charcuterie in your house also includes seafood and um, pickled vegetables and different things. Uh, tell us how you and Francesco met and how your love affair actually started with food. Oops, you're muted. There you go. I was working here in Bacolod at that time. Uh, 
Francesco arrived here in the Philippines in the mid 80s. Um, and through Matteo Guidicelli's grandfather, Gianni, uh, they went to Bacolod, you know, to, to see who was making seafood. And I, at that time, I was processing uh, fro crab meat for the U.S. market. And it's, it's funny because I didn't speak, of course, I didn't speak Italian at that time. And uh, we had to, we had to ask, <laughs> we had to ask Johnny to, to, you know, our, be our interpreter. But while in Manila, definitely I had to ask the Philippine Italian Association to help me out in, interpret, in the interpretation. So, so everywhere I went, I always had somebody from, from Pia <laughs> with, with us, just so I could understand. I, I love that your story, first of all, started with food and it's intertwined with food and of course PIA. So the Philippine Italian Association has been here in the country since 1962. And they offer of a, 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 they offer quite a few services for Italians and for Filipinos. My kids actually took Italian language, excuse me, Italian language lessons through their language courses. Um, they also offer assistance for people who retire here, for Italians who retire here, they offer translation translation services, like Isabel had said. And um, for me, they're really a great resource. They have a library. It's also connected to um, the Manila Public Library, I think, as well. So it's really a wonderful example of how the Philippines and the Italians can come together, of course, and really just promote culture, music, art, food, of course, wine, <laughs> um, all of the good things, all of the good things. Chef Pao, do you have your wine there? I have my water. Yes? Cheers. <laughs> yes, I have a question. I have all this food in front of me. I have a basket yes. from, from Oriental Merchants. I have my cheese from Casa del Formaggio. And I yes. have the Ted box. Yes. Am I allowed to eat while we're talking here? Because yes, absolutely. <laughs> I've been eating. <laughs> Okay, yes. okay. Good. Start. I have Perfect. my carbonara as well. Cheers. So, Perfect. So cheers. For us, we drink. Mm. Cheers. Yes, cheers to us, to Italian food, <laughs> to Delicious. kitchen love. How is it, Mia? Delicious? I've been notching also. Okay, so before we go into what else I wanted to share about the Philippine Italian Association, I do want to announce our winner. Um, we have... The winner is Ilo Lopez. Congratulations, you answered correctly by saying meatballs. So what I did share was that I usually make a big pot of sauce. This includes neck bones, sausage, um, meatballs, sometimes even a piece of brajol if I'm back home. Um, it's very hard to get that here. So, um, that's what I make on Sunday. I'll put it on. I'll wake up early, uh, put it on at like eight o'clock, and then we'll eat early dinner because dinner in my parents' house on Sunday was usually 2 or 3 p.m. So we could sit around all day until 5. Um, and then that was early dinner. So meatballs is comfort food for me. Um, but so, you know, meatballs, obviously, I know is just one part of Italian culture, food, cuisine. There is so much more. And when I approached Alessandro Milani to um, partner with us for this episode, it really became a matter of seeing how the Lord works because it's perfect timing. We actually are running, Pia is running an Italian film festival. So for those of you that really want to immerse yourself in Italian culture, you can go ahead and visit their website. Um, you can register for the film festival. We'll bring up the website here. I think we can do that, friends. And then... Um, you, there's a choice of eight different movies. There's like a thriller, a romance. Um, there's one that's kind of like a drama I was looking at. The thriller actually is a chef um, who pairs up with someone in art. So this is where food and art come together. And um, 
it's a, a thriller. They're like stuck in the mountains. The chef has to do things with his spices. Um, but you can see it's very, for me, it's educational. I really do encourage my kids to even watch foreign films. It's, it's different when you're watching a foreign film. Everything is subbed in English. So you will be able to um, see and understand uh, the movie, even if you didn't take your language les lessons from Pia and you don't need your interpreter. So you can go ahead and check that out. Um, it's very easy to go check out www.mymovies.it um, and you'll find the Italian Movie Festival. Um, it's, it's a great resource, actually. It's perfect if you want to make your carbonara and then throw on a movie you can sit and watch or you can have your cheese as well. So you can go ahead and visit and that's fantastic for um, for you guys to actually explore Italian culture a little bit more. So this brings us to our second quiz the cook question. Um, we have, let's see, we have lots of our um, viewers commenting so yeah we have stella who said yes my kids love watching movies at home so are you guys ready for another quiz the cook question i know all the viewers are on the edge of their seats and we are not making this easy on you guys we hope you're paying attention because if you are and you win you get to take home or pick up rather a 2000 peso gift certificate from the European diner. You can go visit them, go see them in Uptown, look for Chef Alex and Paul, hang out, have a drink. It's actually a nice place to have a drink if you want to have a nightcap. Um, have something to eat. And then you will also receive pantry staples from Oriental Merchants. And the pantry staples that we're going to show you, so we have pantry staples here, Muti, Robo. Um, we also have Devella Pasta you're going to actually get a whole basket here. This is what you're going to get. I know Mia has her basket unwrapped, but it has everything from tartufata to pizza sauce, pasta, um, tomatoes. There's even ketchup and some ready-made sauces for Muti as well, if you wanted to use them. Making things super easy for you guys. You know, it, it doesn't have to be difficult to put something delicious on the table for your families. And then you'll also get, of course, a box of assorted cheeses from Casa del Formaggio. And then if you want to pick up Italian, you will also get, since this is the second question, uh, an Italian language course, care of the Philippine Italian Association. So um, remember that you need to be living in Metro Manila or have an address in Metro Manila that you're going to share with someone. And of course, for this question, since it's question number two, which is one, four, three, four, four, right? Um, we will choose the fourth person who answers correctly. Make sure you share the live, set it to public. And um, Isabel, could you read our first, our second question? When did Casa Formaggio start importing cheese? Okay, so when we were chatting about this earlier, um, it was again in passing. And I know you guys are paying attention because you guys are astute viewers and you know that this stuff is good. We're not going to make it too easy on you. You guys are getting a lot of fun stuff. You will get to hang out with Chef Pao and Alex in Uptown in their restaurant. And then of course you'll get to try some of the pantry staples and um, all the cheeses, right? So pantry staples make things easy. Um, for me, I think there's always, well, for our house, there's always pasta in the, in the pantry. There's always canned tomatoes. Um, and for this brand, Muti, uh, they have quite a few different varieties. You have the peeled whole tomato. There's also finely chopped. Um, and if you want to make things easier, um, they also have uh, these sauces that are quite easy, super easy to use. So Mia, the kids, actually, if you wanted to let the kids make the whole lasagna, you could. <laughs> Great idea. There you go. We'll put them to work earlier. Okay, let's see if we have, wow, 170 comments. Hoping to win. Here we go. 
Um, they're guessing. They're guessing, but I don't think we have the correct answer yet. Um, this is when um, Isabel shared that they started making cheese, right? Oh, we have a winner. Great. Okay, so we have a winner. Congratulations, Chris V. Marie. You answered correctly with the answer of 2014. Congratulations. You will get some cheese from Casa del Formaggio. Please make sure you have a Manila address. You'll get pantry staples, and of course, you'll get to visit um, the European diner in Uptown, as well as an Italian language course, should you want to speak Italian. All right, so guys, let's talk about, um, let's talk about <clears throat> why you chose. I'm not sure if we said this earlier. I know I've heard the story because we sat and chatted and had wine and ate. And of course, we talk about life stories when we do that. Um, but why did you choose the Philippines? I remember you ch when you came to the Philippines where you ate, but why did you choose the Philippines? Hello, we, we moved in the Philippines, me and my girlfriend, just uh, three years and a half ago. After a lot of vacation, because we spend time here like a tourist, no, it's quite different between tourists and resident. After that, we will spend much more time just to see if we uh, love and likes the life here, no. And after that, we move permanently. And just one year ago, there was the possibility to open the restaurant, and we just uh, grab it, no, the train, and uh, we open just to share our passion. Uh, this is our story. Because my my girlfriend is from uh, uh, Italy, is she's born in Italy, but the origin is from uh, here. So imagine was you know this is the life, no? It was the our train and we grab it. So we decide to move uh, everything, our life. We just stop our life in Italy and uh, we choose the Philippines because we like the life here. It's more uh, easier. Let's say it's more stress. For example, in Italy, it's stressful. It, it, people every day runs and runs and. Here we found another uh, atmosphere, so we decided to stay here. And of course, uh, when we'll come back, uh, it's even better the relationship that you have. Because uh, imagine if you have something uh, every day near you, you don't even take care, you don't give the exact uh, attention to that. Instead of maybe uh, missing to come back to your country, your country for uh, years, months, years, so you can uh, see the difference, you can give quality you know, to the relationships, and uh, that's amazing. I, I will admit quality of life is very different, of course. Um, and especially if you're spending time with family and friends and um, surprisingly enough, so you mentioned that you opened, so you moved right before the pandemic. So we went yeah. into lockdown and then you opened the restaurant with Chef Paolo in the middle of the pandemic. How did that come yeah. about? <laughs> you know, we, we had... <laughs> Someone can consider us crazy, you know? Yes. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, uh, it was a great opportunity. And uh, uh, I do this since, since I was uh, 16, 17 years old. So we want to share, as Alex said, the passion we have for food. And, uh, uh, you know, people always misunderstand the owners of restaurants as, as business people, businessmen, entrepreneurs. We are restaurateurs. The difference is restaurateurs see not only the, the, the profit and everything, you know, and the income, but you see the happiness of the client when they go away. So you prefer the, the, the smile of a client, it's worth a lot more than, than the money you get. You know? And uh, we felt during pandemic that somebody had to do something to, to make people feel safe again, put a smile again to their face, on their face. You know? And we decided to do it, uh, to do it here with Ted. It's a, it's a, it's a, um, when our viewers will come to visit us, they will see it's a, the, the quality of food is, it's pretty high, but the ambience is really cozy. It's really familiar because we want people to come here and not feel intimidated. They have to come here and feel at home, no? Uh, so it's a, that's all the concept of, of making people happy with food. Like we were saying before, no? People are getting confident with the, 
Italian food, the real and traditional one. So this is uh, the message that we want to send to everyone. No? Don't be scared to try. Be open-minded and we will warm your heart with our traditional cuisine. Well, I definitely am confident in coming down and enjoying <laughs> a, a meal, of course. Um, when Nino and I first dined in the restaurant, we did try the brasato, and I know that's something that we're going to share with the viewers as well. But let's talk about really quickly, um, before we roll that video, the difference between, I know, Paolo, you said um, northern food, and Isabel's husband, Francesco, is from Venice, so his... Uh, northern food is may even be a little bit different than your northern food from where your mother, you said your mother comes from the north. We know that um, in when you look at the, the, the borders that surround northern Italy, you're talking about France, Austria, Switzerland, right? And then when you look at the south, you're looking at, you know, the Amalfi Coast, which of course, and it's all surrounded by water. So that I feel the south I know is definitely more Mediterranean in flavor, but so how, how does the North and the South eat differently? You know, the, a lot of the times it happens and people ask us, no, what's the uh, typical, most typical Italian food? And uh, there is no an answer for that because from region to region, when it comes to food, it's like if they're different countries. You know? And that's the beauty, you know, we have uh, this huge diversity when it comes to food, biodiversity, that, uh, that create a variation, a range that is uh, it's, uh, unmatched in the world. You know? that's, the, that's the beauty of Italy. You know? uh, so, of course, in the, in the South, usually, uh, you have more dishes inclined to be more into the seafood side or, or uh, refreshing, you know? because it's hotter there. While in the North, right. you, you have, uh, let's say, heavier, food yes so especially when it's winter time you know it's always known yes. there but yeah. uh it's this is a, a let's say a major rule but then even in the north you have uh, as, as isabel was saying no in venezia area seafood are, are everywhere no? yeah. and so on and even in the south you have every so it's uh, um, it's so diverse but yet so yeah. it can be so similar right you know? So each region, I mean, much like Filipino cooking, right? We also have our Trinity in Filipino cooking. It's very similar to the Trinity in Italian cooking. Every region has their own specialty. Um, some dishes, obviously where it's colder, I think the food is a little bit heavier, just like this dish that we're going to show. So let's roll the beef brasato and the polenta. Nice. This is typical from the north, the brasato beef with polenta. So we let's let's go over it. Uh, it's it's a pretty long preparation. Uh, now you see we are chopping the onion, carrot, and in you know, a bit the celery and garlic to prepare what is called soffritto. So it's uh, slightly sauté in uh, extra virgin olive oil. Uh, while we are preparing this, uh, we will be putting the meat, uh, the beef to to marinate. So this is uh, this is beef cheek but we can use uh, brisket, we can use short ribs. You see, we put salt, pepper, we put fresh rosemary, bay leaves, and then we cover it with red wine. Uh, usually the best thing to do is to use Barolo wine, so Nebbiolo grape. Of course, people can use whatever wine they have and they prefer. Uh, just the tradition usually uh, from Piemonte is using the Barolo wine. So we will, uh, we will cover it uh, completely, then put some clean wrap and uh, and let it marinate for at least 24 hours. That's why it's called 24 hours, yeah. Yeah. It's already and delicious by itself like this. <laughs> so we let it marinate 24 hours. You will see shortly the, the color, how, how it change. Because we let the meat absorb all the flavors, you see. All the flavors of the wine, all the aroma of the herbs. So it's amazing. And after the 24 hours, we start the cooking process. So we start in the sofrito, so extra virgin olive oil. And when the onion start being translucent, we, we transfer the meat inside and we let it sear all around no? to be sure that the juices inside the meat stay inside. You see, it's releasing already some of uh, some of the liquid. Yeah. Uh, after we sear it, we continue putting more, of course, uh, Barolo wine. And we continue the cooking with, uh, in our case, we prefer to put vegetable sauce. 
to enhance the flavor of the piece of meat and the barolo itself. We put some, uh, some tomato paste and then we close it and let it cook a low fire for long, three, four, five hours. Depends yeah, on so the amount is, of meat and the quality of the meat. This is also a braised dish. So yes. this is what we... Then and we then do polenta. This... Polenta is coarse, uh, coarse pork. Uh, as since we want to pair it with the, with the prasato, we cook it in water, but you can also cook it in stock for more flavor. So what we do, we cook it in, uh, in boiling water. And then to add uh, something to it, at the end we add some milk that will give some silky flavor, silky texture to it. And then we whisk it with uh, cold uh, frozen butter and uh, grated parmigiano reggiano, like what we do with the top. So yes. it will give the creaminess. We want, uh, in the north we use polenta, like in the Philippines we use rice. Uh, so it mm. will complement whatever is the, the main course or the main protein of the dish. Yes. So we we'll just give some flavor, but not too much. So we have different layers of, of flavors. Uh, once everything is done, uh, we are chopping some veggies. Here we're using some eggplant, uh, zucchini, and carrot. And we will saute them really, really, really quickly. Because like this, we will have three different consistencies in the dishes. You have the silky texture of the polenta. You have the tender uh, beef from the slow baking process. And then you have the crunchiness of the veggies, especially the carrot. Mm -hmm. So it gives you different, different uh, textures, different flavors, and it's, uh, it becomes more of an experience. It's, and we it's a great balance. Yes. Yeah. Some really parsley to give some freshness and, and uh, aroma no? to it. It's, uh, it's something really warming. Uh, it's, uh, it's not as easy, of course, as the carbonara, you know? but uh, it's something that once you try it, you, you cannot stay away from it. Right. Yeah. Well, we are salivating right now just by looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so definitely. Yeah, the stews and the braising and, um, you know, these these cuts of meat that are really meant to be cooked for such a long time really yield Correct. so much flavor. And the layers are what, for me, what excites me. I really enjoyed that dish when I had it in the restaurant. Yeah, and of course, I loved the polenta. I I really do enjoy polenta. I'm not sure if many Filipinos, Mia, Isabel, I mean, Isabel, you're married to Francesco, so I'm sure you, you enjoy Doing polenta. Another, we, we love polenta. <laughs> we will know also the feedback of Isabel and Mia about <laughs> polenta. <laughs> I've tried polenta, well, but not here. Is it easy to find? Okay. I mean, I'm not sure. I, I don't think it's easy to find. Right. Now, um, now you can. Uh, now you can. Now find it is. Yes. yes. You yeah. can find especially the, the the one that is really quick to to cook. No, so it's the quick one. But the the, 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 the authentic polenta takes really 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 long and, and really strength in the in the arm. No whisking for forty minutes, forty five minutes. No? And unfortunately, there is no white polenta here in the Philippines. It's only yellow. Never... No, no, it's true. Uh, it's only the yellow. Yes. Yeah, it's all the yellow. There is no, there is not all wheat. In Venice, the, the white polenta is very popular. The, the so, but not, from Venice, not so yeah. much outside, outside of the Veneto region, but more in the Veneto area only. But what's it's the white. difference between white and yellow polenta? Is it the kind of corn that they use? Is there a flavor yeah, the difference? Inside. Yes. It's a different type of corn. corn. Yeah. It's no, it's like it's like having a yellow corn and a white corn. So, so the corn. yellow polenta would be a little sweeter, maybe. Mm, no, um, less really. less strong the flavor. No, it's okay. uh, less in less intense. Okay. It's more of a complementing uh, starch for right. the for the rest of the dish. But you see the. the this is the same thing I was talking before. No? The, the beauty of, of Italy when it comes to cooking, the technique are really simple, no? in a way. Uh, it's the, the ingredients. We have a beautiful diversity for, for raw material that is uh, second to none. Just to yes. give you a short example, now, now Isabel was talking about the different polentas or different corn. Uh, everybody talk about tomatoes. No? Yes. But it, it applies to everything. Think about apples. No? Yeah. There are around 1,500 different variations of apples in the world. Out of 1,500, yeah. more than 1,200 are only in Italy. So that's huh? what is the difference. Not New York? 
okay but that actually chef pal you actually you really um bring it down to the ingredients and the the differences or the nuances and even even the soil or the amount of rainfall or the different things, right? So um, you guys who are watching, you will get to try some of these ingredients as well. We don't have polenta in the kit. You'll have to look for that. But we do have fantastic cheeses from Casa, Casa del Formaggio. We do have pantry staples from OMI. And yeah, we, we have your food us. <laughs> Yes, fantastic. And so if you guys want to try yours, you can bring that out too while we're reading the next Quiz the Cook question. You will also um, get to receive an e-learning, um, uh, a subs not a subscription. This one is still, it's the third question, right? So you will get a language course from Philippine Italian Association. Um, and then of course you can visit Chef Pao and Chef Alex down in um, Uptown Mall BGC, right? I keep saying Uptown, but it's Uptown BGC. Yeah. It's like right down the road from here. Um, and so guys, this is our next question. Um, make sure you have shared the live stream. Make sure that you are watching from the Mama in Manila Facebook page or the Rappler Facebook page, because that's where we can see your comments. And because this is the third question, you will it will be one, four, three. So the third person to answer correctly will win. So Chef Alex, before I read that question, one of the viewers said, you made a good choice in moving to the Philippines because hashtag it's more fun in the Philippines. <laughs> not, cons okay. not considering the COVID that maybe ruined the plan for uh, a lot of people, right. but uh, the life here right. is very active. Right. Quality life. Right. Our country is so vast and so beautiful and just as diverse as Italy. I can't wait to explore the Philippines again now that things are starting to open up. So, um, guys, go ahead. Make sure you share the live. Uh, you also have to live in Metro Manila to be receiving some of these, to be receiving these um, gifts from our partners because they are perishable. So question number three for Quiz the Cook. Um, Isabel, this is your question I would like you to read. And maybe you're muted. I will read it for you. What was the first type of cheese that Casa del Formaggio made? So um, if you were paying attention, so this is our segue actually now. This is where we can also talk about cheese. And then we're going to talk about pantry staples. I know, um, Mia, you wanted to taste some cheese. Chef Alex, you brought up your box of cheese also. Isabel, do you want to talk us through some of the cheeses um, that we have in front of us? And also, where our viewers can purchase them? Well, we are from, from Bacolod, Negros Occidental. But we are available in Manila. And uh, you can... Always get in touch with us through our Facebook and Instagram page. Uh, just give us a chat, and someone will get in touch with you. And you can, I, we can either send it through you, through your, through a writer, through Lalamove, you know, Grab, and all of those. Um, the chefs have tried, of course, our mozzarella, and uh, hopefully, <laughs> our most popular, of course, is our burrata. So. So this one you can get available in a lot of restaurants and uh, also through us. And next one you have is your, we have a soft cheese. We also have a soft cheese that is inside the box. You can have it for the sandwiches, just like the ashago. So your rubiola and your ashago alto can be for your sandwiches. You can make your grilled cheese, you know, a hammock cheese sandwich. <laughs> uh, those those types of, of semi-hard cheese can be used. For the hard cheeses, like our parmesan, which is a very limited uh, a cheese for us, uh, you can use, again, for your for your pastas and <laughs> and for for fillings you know for even for your raviolis and for your meatballs if you're making you can use those types of cheese or a substitute but you can for the pecorino 
right? Right, right. <laughs> but you can find all the different cheeses we have in our website. You can check it out. Uh, Again, we have we have all of those. A lot of a lot of the restaurants in Manila uses uses our burrata, our burratina. You can find it in pizza. You can find it in BGC, Quezon City, you know, Makati, all, all, even even Abang, uh, even in in Nubali, you will find a restaurant that uses uses our cheese also. So your cheeses are actually um, wait. I see Chef Alex and Paolo are looking like they want to say something. <laughs> what would you guys like to say? I saw you eating some of the yep. cheese. We have, we, have the, we have the mouth busy. <laughs> okay. For me, I just tried. So, um, guys, again, simplicity of Italian ingredients. Having the mozzarella from Casa del Formaggio, I just sliced some tomatoes that were ripe, some fresh basil from Future Fresh. I just put salt and pepper on top and a little bit of olive oil. This brings me back to my childhood. This is something that I would snack on with my dad. Um, you know, we'd have this salad often. We'd Maybe he'd have some dried sausage uh, or even some provolone and apples. We would, this is a snack for me. It, it, this is comfort. So mozzarella for me, Isabella, so good fresh <clears throat> fresh um i can't wait to explore and enjoy some more of the cheeses um so interesting for me to find that actually you supply a lot of the restaurants that we already know and go to for italian food as well so you guys may have eaten casa del formaggio cheeses already and you didn't even know it um so chefs you've had the cheese before which one did you try today Right now we try provolone for uh, for something that it's still it's still a secret. Uh, it's uh, we are preparing a, a special lunch for Easter, and there is one uh, savory, one salty cake that they cook only in one city of Italy, only for Easter, and inside Ooh. there is provolone. So we were trying it to Ooh. put it in it. No? So it's gonna Yay. be interesting. I I as I said, as I said before, I tried already the product of Casa del Formaggio years before, and the, the quality is exceptional. No? Especially considering that they are done here no? with local products, it's, it's amazing. Fantastic. Mia, which cheese did you try? And which cheese? There's a little story um, you and I have. Like, we've been friends, I don't know for how long. But I know been, um, <laughs> 10 years. Oh my gosh, Talaga. It's 20, 20 it was 2012. Years. It was 2012 when we met and you invited me to your house to cook. And I was like, I mean, you know, I was I was a mom. I'm a, I was a young mom just going out again, making friends again after you know being a stay-at-home mom. And I wanted to make friends, and Michelle was interesting and she was pretty and she seemed really <laughs> nice. So I said, Yeah, sure, I'm gonna be her friend. And she invited me to cook and I had to say, Mish, I don't cook. <laughs> yes, I know, but I, I told you I would teach you something. Yeah, and 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 she actually taught me how to make eggplant parmigiana and um she walked me through it and this is the nice thing i mean mish has done a lot of events uh, you know cooking events right with 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 sab um and 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 what i love about it is that she makes it easy and it's a, and a lot of like with the eggplant parmigiana for me a non-cook it was very um it was very uh not it was not at all intimidating that I actually did it right away at home, and Yay. I loved it. And my kids loved it. It's 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 one of our favorites to do as well at home. So yeah. So whenever I think of eggplant parmigiana, I think about the first time I met Mish. Yay! So that really was the first time. Like I remember we met, and I wanted to learn more about your soaps. But I think the first time we became friends was yes. when we started I, cooking together. We met at uh, Mommy Mundo Bazaar. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then we kept in touch and then you told me to come over to your house because we lived near each other then. Yes. And yeah. So, um, so a little confession. Which cheese? Wait, before I confess. Oh, yes. Um, which cheese did you try? 
um the burrata it is so good <laughs> i was I, I could eat the whole ball of it right now really if 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 i weren't on camera <laughs> <laughs> you, just, like, and you just gotta slice it up small so that people don't know that you're eating the whole thing <laughs> yeah but they're gonna be seeing me putting it in my mouth every now and then but it's so delicious and that's what we are doing yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's what you're doing now. Yeah, right? You can put even in the past. So, guys, we're supposed to eat. We have to taste things. So feel free. Enjoy. Yeah. And I'm sure Isabel is enjoying the fact that we're enjoying her product. Yes. I was also able to sneak in um, a bite of the brasato. And Mish, I understand why you have to hide it. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do. And now I'm trying to think, how do I not show this to yes. my kids so I can yeah. enjoy it for like, see. my son just turned around and said, what? <laughs> Are you hiding something from me, mom? So confession, a lot of times, um, of course, when you get older and you have kids and your kids aren't necessarily like, you're not making friends. Moms usually make friends at school. The 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 parents of the other kids in school are usually how you get together with some of the moms, right? And um, I'm not big on drinking. Um, I also like to do, I mean, I do enjoy a nice glass of scotch or a nice glass of wine, but I'm not like, I won't say, hey, let's go out for drinks. I would rather invite someone over and say, hey, let's cook together because then we can cook and you can bond in the kitchen and you can learn a lot about someone just by spending a little time in the kitchen with them. Um, and for me, that's usually been my go-to. It's actually, you mentioned Sab. Um, that's actually how Sab and I got together as well. We wanted to cook together and she was like my soul sister in the kitchen. So cooking for me is love and of course it's a way for me to kind of open up my home and welcome someone in to our lives um i think we have a winner um we did we announce the winner for question three we can announce our winner for question three who answered correctly erin buenaventura answered correctly with Kesung Poutine. So congratulations, Erin, you will win um, a, a gift basket from OMI, cheeses from um, Casa del Formaggio. You'll get to visit uh, the European diner so you can see Chef Paolo and uh, Alessandro there. And you'll also get, this is the fourth, third question. So you will also get an opportunity to learn the Italian language um, over at the Philippine Italian Association. So let's talk about, we've talked about cheeses. I wanna talk about the pantry staples and OMI. So Oriental Merchants has um, been here in the Philippines for quite some time as well. Actually, they have, and up again, the Lord's timing. When I approached them and said, we're doing an Italian episode, do you have Italian products that you want to feature? They said, well, we're having a sale. It's been two years since we went online. The pandemic, of course, forced them to really up their website and their digital presence. So you guys can actually shop online during their um, summer sale. They have a sale that is starting um, on March 30th until April 1, and it's 15% off site wide. So you can actually get your Italian ingredients, your Spanish ingredients, anything that they have there. They also have some healthcare, uh, beauty care, a little bit of that from Spain. Um, but you can go ahead and shop till your heart's delight and stock up on your pantry staples. Um, I'll share a very easy recipe that I made with one of the pantry staples that will also be on sale this in the coming two weeks. Um, you can go ahead and use the discount code. It's ANNIV2022, and you can visit them at um, orientalmerchantsshop.com. So, but there's extra, because they're extra. All right, so you can shop any of the, the pastas. There's also, you know, your truffle oil. You also have your um, ready mixes. There's pesto. You know, I, I, I like to make my fresh pesto, but I also like to keep this in the pantry for when I'm not here and I'll tell the kids, you know, go ahead and throw, make some pesto pasta. Uh, pesto pasta. Pesto 
that's a tongue twister right now. <laughs> Pesto pasta. Um, and then, of course, any of these desserts, they also have couscous and the different kinds of pasta sa pastas that are available. I will say Devella is the only pasta brand that I have been able to find consistently, the Orecchette. And the Orecchette pasta I like because I usually make it with broccoli. At home, I would make it with broccoli rab and um, sausage, but there's no broccoli rab here. So um, I will just make it with sausage and broccoli, uh, which is okay because I'm adapting to the environment, right? Like, you know finding my way in the, in the jungle here. I'm finding my way with my broccoli instead of broccoli rab. So Devella does have orecchette, if you like that. They also have the fusilli, which is here. Pasta for me on Sundays is either rigatoni or penne. They also have all the different spaghettis. They have whole wheat options. Um, and of course, um, other pastas that are made purely from semolina flour as well. In addition to this sale where you're going to get 15% off. So minimum spend of 2,500 pesos, you'll get free shipping. If you spend 5,000 pesos, this is what I want to share with you. Really cute. So you will enter for a raffle. So if you are going to stock your pantry right now, you'll get one of these really cute Pull, pull plates to bring to the table. How cute is this conversation piece? I was kind of hiding it underneath my capressi, but um, of course, if you were gonna put some grilled popo there on the, the plate, the serving plate, how fun is that? Then you will also um, have a chance to win a hand-painted um, tablecloth and napkin set from Devella. And you will also have the opportunity to enter for the raffle if you spend 5,000 pesos or more, um, this Carmen Sita box. So it's super fun and it's a hundred years. So it's one of the prizes and you'll have some truffle salt. You have your pimenta, your black pepper, and then you also have a spicy salt as well. And I use all of the Carmen Sita um, grinders in the house. It's it feels special. Um, it's like leveling up my seasoning as well. And when you're seasoning, of course, it's fun. Make it fun. Make it extra. And in this case, if you are going to do your pantry shopping now, you'll get to avail of a chance to win some of those really fun goodies to bring to your table. So go ahead and visit Oriental Mer Merchants shop. Um, Mia, did you want to share something about Oriental Merchants? Yes, I wanted to ask something about the Vela because I got this in my bag and mm -hmm. I want to ask, I want to ask the Italians in the house. Yes. What is this? similar to trophy. It's, it's still a pasta. What, yes, okay, so what would be what would be an ideal? <laughs> what would I mean? Is this this will go with any sauce? I think um, it goes. Any pasta can go with any sauce, but uh, okay. wh when you see a shape like this, uh, yeah, the best way is to to yeah. put them with a more liquid sauce or like tomato sauce, because the sauce can go inside inside it. Right, no? so every time right, you get a exactly, bite, it's, uh, exactly. Okay, gotcha. Okay. We can't do it. Interesting. All right. So there you, you have it. You it's learned another show. It's out of Italy. It's from Puglia? Yeah. Okay. So those pantry staples all obviously are available. Now, guys, if, um, if you weren't aware, all of these pantry staples are actually available in the grocery stores. I've been shopping their products without even knowing that they were their products from a long time ago. One thing I will show you really quickly because I'm I can't wait to make something with this. It's gonna go with that um, burrata. This is artichoke carts, but the difference in these artichoke carts um, is that they also have the stem. Nice. So it's gonna look it's really, really mine, pretty. Huh? Yes, really Don't pretty. Worry, yeah. So I may I may consult you on um, you guys on how to do Absolutely. this. And this one I thought was also really interesting, the porcini. Okay, nice. Um, so with all of those goodies that are easy to make, um, I am excited to share. Now I will preface this because I am sure Chef Powell and Chef 
Alex, and even Francesco, if he was here. I know Isabel won't judge me. Um, but, <laughs> but I know that if Francesco was here, he might say, why are you not using mascarpone um, in this year, Musu? But I will but I will say, Mia knows me also. I like to make things easy. And for you ladies who want to make something special and bring it to the table, this is super easy and super special. Tiramisu. OK, let's roll that video. So this tiramisu, actually here is the, the box, I'll show it. Um, it's very easy. All I had to do was um, buy my lady fingers and also buy uh, one liter of cream and that's how easy it was. So Robo is a brand that many people are familiar with. It is an Italian brand, um, very easy to make. Um, if you were gonna bring this to a potluck, I feel like you would totally rock it out. People would wanna know how you made it. <laughs> and you could say, oh, it's nothing, it was so easy. <laughs> um, literally just pouring the whipping cream into the bowl and whipping it. Um, you set it aside for an hour, put it in the fridge, um, and, you know, get ready. So when you make tiramisu, of course, you need your espresso. I pulled out my mom's mocha. I'm not, I'm still not comfortable using it completely. <laughs> um, dip your lady fingers, um, place them to make them pretty, of course. You could put rum. Um, Chef Paolo, what is another liquor that you could put in tiramisu besides the rum? Uh, actually, we we do not put liquor because of the story of it. It's, it's my version, our version. But okay. you can, there are the majority of people love to put liquor. You can put anything. What works really well can be the frangelico. So it's an ah. Italian liquor with some yes. hazelnut flavor. Yes. So I typically, I don't like liquor in my desserts. Um, so when I'm normally making this for our family, I wouldn't put, actually, I don't make this. Nino makes this and he okay. makes it from scratch. So, and he's, he's, he's on the background. You guys, can see. <laughs> um, he makes it from scratch and, uh, he doesn't put liquor either because he knows that, that I don't like it. But for this one, I just put one layer with a little bit of rum just to give it a little bit of bite. And I will be honest, this is the last piece. So it came perfectly. Um, it was very good. Miguel has eaten more than half the plate. <laughs> 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 so my son, who who actually, you know, I don't have to coax him to eat anything Italian. He's my Italian boy. I have two sons. Miguel enjoys Italian food. Diego enjoys um, Italian American food. Diego enjoys uh, Filipino Filipino food. So super easy, guys. Mia, did that seem like something you could totally do? Yes, that's on my list already. After the carbonara. There you go. <laughs> and all you have to do is pick it up at the Oriental Merchants sale, which is they're happening. They're so near me. I know they're so near me because I do buy from Oriental Merchants. You do. And they actually recognized when I said you were going to guest on the show. They said, oh, she buys from us. Yes, we do. She does. <laughs> I'm sure she does. Okay, um, guys, we are now on the fourth Quiz the Cook question. Um, this is exciting. Of course, there are two more chances left to win. Uh, you know, for our last Quiz the Cook question, there were over 150 responses of people, 250 responses of people who wanted to win. Guys, there's two more chances. You can still take home a 2000 peso GC uh, from the European diner, a basket from Oriental Merchants, um, language this is not language lessons now it is uh open access to their learning platform and you will get that learning platform from pia for three months so you can explore language culture art music um and enjoy that and then of course all of 
uh, the cheeses from Casa del Formaggio, care of Isabel Patron. Okay, um, living in Metro Manila, make sure you share the live. And this is for the fourth person who will comment and answer correctly. Mia, could you please share um, this question? Sure. Um, I need, okay, there. What dish did Mia and Michelle make together that has become a family favorite in our household? So we were just talking about that. That's the first dish we made together. There you go. Oh, you even gave them another hint. You're you're kind. <laughs> so you're kind. Okay. Um, we are almost out of time. I know that we have so much fun in the kitchen. The time just gets away from us. Um, and for me, I have just had so much fun learning more about the Italian cheeses that are available here, care of Casa del Formaggio, and of course, learning more about the culture from both Chef Paolo and Chef Alex. Um, of course, if you guys would like to share some comments in the comment section of what else you want to learn or what other Italian foods you want to learn, we will be exploring Italian food and culture for a little bit more, maybe one or two more episodes because there's just so many things I want to share with all of you. Um, we would love to hear from you. But before we go um, and before we wrap up, let us ask one last, well, let's see, do we have the winner? Not yet. We don't have the winner. Okay. So while we don't have the winner, Mia, tell us what you're up to and um, tell us what you're doing. I know you just had like an art exhibit with your dad and um, something I'm still learning a lot about. You're so yes. current. Okay. Um what am I up to? Do I, which one, what do I oh. talk about? <laughs> well, we mainly are, are women who do lots of things. Yes, right? So I do have a website called sotrunaturals.com where we sell bath and body products. Our main product are Castillo soaps, soaps made from olive oil. And we have branched out into workshops. So that's so true workshops. And you can learn how to make soaps and scents and candles and bombs. So visit our website, so true naturals .com. My uh, what what Michelle was talking about um, is that um, I have been I was a retired art dealer, but I was reeled it back into it uh, because my father is an artist. He goes by the name Carlos. And we just finished an exhibit actually um, last weekend. And it was very exciting because my dad just launched his uh, first collection of NFTs. Wow. Um, I think we need a yeah. whole other show. That's a whole different NFTs. thing. It's, yeah, it's very exciting. It's very interesting. It's hard to understand. So my tip is to friends who ask me, I, I'm trying to understand what this is. I say it, it's going to feel like your mind's going to explode. So let it. And then you will pick up the pieces and start to understand it. It's a very interesting space. So I, I'm really excited about that. I'm so excited for you and definitely for your dad. I remember when we were talking about it, you said that your dad would be the oldest artist who is launching his NFTs at this I time. Think, I believe he is the oldest Philippine uh, living Filipino artist who um, launched his NFTs. I am... I'm not sure if I can make that claim worldwide, but I have not heard of anybody else yet. So, okay. Well, congratulations to your papa and, of course, to his doting daughter who made sure that he came out of retirement for that. Yeah. Um, so, they can find you know you on So True. How about your handles, Instagram handles? Instagram handle, um, it's hey, hey Mia Rocha. That's H E Y M I A R O C H A. And for the art, it's art by Carlos E H. Okay, thank you. All right, Chef. Before actually we go to the, um, I would like to announce the winner before we ask Chef Alex and Pao and Isabel to share their um, information where people can find them also. We do have the winner of the fourth question. And Maria Teresa Tamba answered correctly by saying eggplant parmigiana. That was the first, that was the dish. So now guys, we have another question, but before we get to that last question where you guys, of course, are gonna be fighting over the last 
um, kit for everyone. Um, Chef Alex and Paolo, tell us where everyone can find you and um, handles for social media. Okay. So, of course, we the people can come here in uh, Uptown Mall. We are at ground floor, so it's really easy to see us on 9th Avenue. We have a drop-off area, so just passing by with the car, you, you can see Ted. And uh, to, to have a sneak peek of what we do, you can check our Instagram, that is ted.bgc, or our Facebook as well, the European Diner Ted. But, uh, of course, it's, uh, it's, it will be a pleasure and honor for us to, to have everybody come here and let, us, let them try, you know? What, what is our uh, philosophy and our version of Italian, Spanish, and Greek food. Thank you so much. Okay, we will go to our last question and then we will end with Isabel. Um, and Mish, I have a question for the chefs. Sure. How did you come up with your hashtag? Ted thinks they're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, uh, for the name, the name of, of a restaurant is really difficult. It's really a difficult choice, no? So we wanted to to create something to play with, no? Because people always ask us, "Who's Ted?" <laughs> uh, <laughs> even if you, you enter a bit and huge the European diner, but <laughs> we still have the same question. And the, the beauty of it is that everybody can be Ted. That's what we say, no? The person that loves to travel, that loves to, to, to experiment, to be open-minded, no? So to personify the, the, the place. Imagine you come here and you say you're going to TED. You're not going anymore to a restaurant. It's like if you're going to a friend, no? That's all the idea uh, we had behind it. And then it, the TED things, you're beautiful, came up uh, easily. No? <laughs> Very catchy. Very good. <laughs> Very good uh, recall. Yeah, yes. Thank you. And just Absolutely. another thing, so we are also open for delivery for those that maybe are not uh, able to reach because they are living far. Uh, we are open for delivery. We are on Food Panda, and of course they can text us uh, directly on uh, a Facebook or IG, and uh, we will take care about the delivery. Fantastic! In the day and age where digital, of course, is superior this is how we've been you know ordering eating shopping everything for the past two years um ted won't disappoint they can take care of you that way as well we will read our fifth question remembering again that you must live in metro manila or have an address of a friend of someone who you can ship these prizes to because they are perishable you will get a cheese kit a whole cheese box from Casa del Formaggio, you will also get open access to the PIA website where you can learn about culture, um, language, art, music. You'll also get a restaurant gift certificate that you can claim in TED. Of course, hashtag TED thinks you're beautiful. And then you will also get a basket from Oriental Merchants that you can start cooking at home on your own. Okay, question number five. Alex, could you please read that for us? What are the four ingredients of carbonara? All right, we were very clear on this. There is yes. authentic carbonara and there is everything else. <laughs> so we will um, go ahead and, um, hi, Francesco, I'm so glad to see you, hello. Isabel, oh. can you... Hello, Francesco. Hello. Ciao. 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 How are you? Eh, no bad, anyway. <laughs> this is a nice place, beautiful. There is a green. Nice, anyway. Better than the Manila. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It is, well, you're in Bacolod, so of course it is, um, it's, I'm sure it's beautiful there. I haven't been, but my husband and my daughter have both been. I'd love to come and visit and um, see a little bit more of the Philippines as well. Isabel, could you and Francesca tell us, uh, Francesco, tell us a little bit about where they can find your cheeses, um, what restaurants maybe besides Ted that they can go and visit, of course, and um, about, you know, um, Casa del Formaggio. Well, you can always uh, check us out on our Facebook page and Instagram, Casa del Formaggio, or on our uh, 
www.casaformaggio.com. You can also find us there. And you can just send us a message. And most of the time, of course, that we respond in within an hour. And you'll find all our products in a lot of the restaurants in Metro Manila, just like, uh, <laughs> like the Wildflower Group. Margarita. The, of course, Margarita Forest uh, restaurants and um, her catering the chibo uh, chibo and uh, nona's group is also carrying our burrata. so quite a number of and also hotels isabel yeah. i'm curious do you have any plans of opening your 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 what do you call it the creamery he's <laughs> um, making place for tours or something because i remember my kids and i went to one in new york and they loved it and they really enjoyed it we, wow, used to, we used to be open when we first started out the the dairy farm was open for the public schools they would have uh, the children coming in you know but for sanitary purposes we've actually stopped that uh it is difficult to control any of the diseases that come in mm -hmm. so yes. that, that's, that's uh, very right now yes but well, hopefully, uh, we're hoping, I mean, if we do get to put up one in Manila, we are hoping to have maybe a, like the store making some of the cheeses right there before you. So so hopefully. Okay. <laughs> to be able to see hand pulled mozzarella, it, I know that I, when I would see the delis back home, when they would make it in front of us also, super hot water. You know, the, the guys behind the counter with hands, I would joke and say they're like asbestos hands because the water is so hot. How can it's they? It's very hot. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, so I, super hot. I learned. I will be one of the first people online with my kids as well. And so will Mia. We can come and make it a field trip. Um, thank you so much for, for sharing. Okay, we have our winner. We will announce our winner. And then, of course, we will say goodbye to everyone. Guys, don't forget that um, we will have another Italian episode. So exploring more Italian food and different ways to enjoy it, of course. So here is the winner. We have Lemuel Nicasio Francisco, who answered correctly. Spaghetti, guanciale, egg yolks, and pecorino cheese. And then... She also, Lemuel, he also put X-O-X-O-X-O-X-O. -X -O -X -O -X -O. So, <laughs> so he's given lots of hugs and kisses for the authentic carbonara. Um, this is Michelle Aventajado, Mia, Alex, Paolo, Francesco, and Isabel. Thank you for joining us and educating us about cheese, Ciao. about authentic food, Italian food and culture. Guys, see you very soon. Um, same bat time, same bat channel. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah. Thanks, Ciao. Bro. Ciao. 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 Ciao.